Welcome to another video. I'm going to do a little digression from infinitely nested radicals because I came across this today and while solving it, I said, this is a good question for a video. So I want to talk about power series and how to express any function as a power series. Now, you have to know that the whole idea of power series is to write a function as a polynomial because polynomials are easy to differentiate, easy to integrate. So if you're able to write any function as a polynomial, then you can perform any integration, even any addition, even subtraction, even multiplication, even polynomial division can be done on a power series representation of any function. So it's a very important concept, and we're going to try to write this as a polynomial or express it as a power series. Let's get into the video. Let's do a quick recap of a geometric series because it is the geometric series that gave birth to the power series. Okay, let's see. If the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1 for a geometric series, I'm going to write it this way, then one thing we know is that the geometric series converges. And for you to have a power series, you don't want a polynomial that represents a function but looks completely different, or you cannot evaluate or estimate the value of the function at a given um, value. So what you want to do is make sure that whatever you're doing looks very much like what you're constructing. So that's the essence of convergence, and that's why we need the common ratio to be less than 1. So here we're going to say because of this, we can actually find the convergence. But look at how beautiful this is. We know the series converges. And then if you have an infinite series, of infinite geometric series, we know that this, this the series, um, let's call it a sub n, starting from n equals 1 to infinity, will be equal to, if the first term is 1, let's assume the first term is 1, okay, um, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus, it just keeps on going like that to infinity. This is a geometric series with a common ratio of r and the first term is 1. Because this is the e, and what do you do with this? Well, you can actually write this one as r to the 0. Look. This is r to the 1. Remember, this is 1. And then we can say that Rn starts from 0. It doesn't matter how you write it, but we just want to show that, you see what I have here? I can actually say that this is equal to the sum of all r's raised to power n, where n starts from 0 to infinity. This is the general representation of a power series or a geometric series. Okay, let me call it a geometric series because we're using R. Now, what is the sum of all these terms? Well, if you remember from your algebra 2, I think, or pre-calculus, the sum of a geometric series to infinity, this sum can be written as 1 over 1 minus R. This one here is the first term, which is r to the 0, which we have converted to r to the 0. And this is it. This is how you write any geometric series to infinity. It is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. That means if you can find a way to write this polynomial to look like this, then you can write this like this. So remember that this 1 over 1 minus r is the same thing as r to the 0 plus, let, let me just write 1 this time, okay? It's just going to be 1 plus r plus r to the 
second plus it keeps on going like that forever which is the same thing as the sum to infinity of r to the n n equals zero to infinity that's one over one minus r this is what we're talking about so it doesn't matter how you write it these two are the same thing just know you have a common ratio that is less than one the absolute value is less than one and you can have your power series so what's the mission in this video we're going to rewrite this thing and make it look like this now because this guy on top of this expression is already a polynomial i am going to ignore it okay so i'm going to say that f of x is equal to g of x multiplied by 1 over 3 plus x squared. So I can say that g of x equals x cubed. So I want to focus on this guy here. Okay, now notice that 1 over 3 plus x, just the inside, I'm going to come back to squaring it, is the same thing as 1 over, if you remember, what I had was 1 over 1 minus r. So I need this to be a negative sign, but this is a positive sign, so I have to write this as 3 minus negative x. And because this, I want it to be 1, I will have to divide or factor out 3 from here because I want this to be 1 so I can say this is the same thing as 1 divided by instead of writing 3 I'm going to factor out 3 and here I'm going to have 1 minus but factoring th out 3 means I'm taking 3 from this also which means I'm dividing by 3 so this is negative x over 3 now this now looks like this but you can tell that my r is now negative x over 3. You can say this implies the common ratio is negative x over 3. And if this has to be convergent, if I have to say, oh, I can make a power series out of this, this has to be less than 1. So it means this has to be less than 1. The absolute value of this has to be less than 1. So um, this implies that is the absolute value of negative x over 3 must be less than 1. x over 3 is less than 1, which implies x is less than 3. You see this x is less than 3? This is what you call the radius of convergence. Okay, so if you're ever told to find the radius of convergence, this is what it means. Once you've found what represents your r, take the absolute value, Claim that it is less than 1, and then solve the inequality. You're going to get x is less than 3, so your radius of convergence is 3. Let's put it here, because we need a lot of space, equals 3. That means if you stay within 3 units of whatever x you pick, everything will be fine. Once you go beyond 3, there's going to be a problem. And remember, I already said this is the same thing as 1. You see that? Plus negative x over 3 plus negative x over 3 squared plus negative x over 3 cubed plus you just keep going forever this is the power series of just this inside you say what happened to the 3 don't worry that's not a problem we're going to bring it back inside we're going to make everything look beautiful okay so at this point what you have is the same thing as let's write this so you can see what it really looks like this is I'm gonna erase this because this is not what we want to generate I just want to show you that this is the power series so this is gonna be 1 this would be minus x over 3 this is gonna be plus x squared over 9 this would be minus x cubed over 27 plus tap 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 so that's what you get in that case but there's a formula. This is generally the sum that you have. What did we say the sum is? The sum is always the first term 
divided by 1 minus, aha, it's going to be 1 minus the common ratio, negative x over 3. Do you see that this is going to take us all the way back to what we had originally without the square? It's going to take us back to this. So that's, this is not the mission. The mission is to write a summation for it. And what is the summation? It is the sum of all the terms that we've got. Okay, remember that the sum of a geometric series is always written this way. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of r to the n. This is a geometric series that converges. And that's exactly what we're going to write for this. I'm going to get rid of this and write it. So look at the representation. This is the same thing as the sum n equals 0 to infinity of what's our common ratio? It's negative x over 3. So it's going to be negative x over 3 raised to power n. That's what this is. This is the same thing as this. Okay? And I don't want to write this. This is not what we, this is what is equal to this. And what you see is this is the same thing as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of. This has a minus 1 that is, let's separate the minus 1. This is raised to power n, and this is x over 3 raised to power n. So we can say our answer is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to power n times, what would this be? x to the n over 3 to the n. So this is the form that we get. This is cleaner, and you can do a lot with this. Okay, um, remember that what we have here is purely this guy on the inside. We still have a 3 hanging out here, so I need to bring back that 3. So, what if I say that I put the 3 here, and I use it to multiply this? Well, it means I will have to put a 3 in the denominator here. I have to have one third here also. Okay? Yeah, and you can move the one-third inside. It doesn't matter. Okay? I can actually move it in now so that if I use one-third to multiply this, this is going to be 3n plus 1. Okay? And I don't have to put the one-third on the outside. Okay? That's it. So, I have written this as a power series expression. But that's not the original problem. The original thing had a square on the outside. So you would say, am I supposed to square this? No, don't square it. Think about it. How can you turn this into a square? Remember, when you take the derivative of a, an, a, a rational expression like this, the denominator now picks up a square. So why don't you think of differentiating this? Because if you differentiate this, you're going to get something that looks like this. Okay, let's do that somewhere here. Okay, we're going to say that 1 over 3 plus x, we're going to take the derivative prime. Okay, remember this is going to be 3 plus x to the negative 1. You take the derivative of this, what would you get? You're going to get negative 3 plus x to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, and we're done. So this is basically negative 1 over 3 plus x squared. So that means the derivative of what you have here, okay, remember with a constant, you can always keep the constant outside, okay? So the derivative of what you have here will be the derivative of what you have here. So, if you differentiate both sides, and by the way, when you differentiate this, you just, you just differentiate the inside. This is the only variable. Everything else stays as a constant. And what will be our answer? On the left-hand side, this is what we're going to get. On the right-hand side, we're going to get the derivative of this. Let's get the derivative. We already said that this is going to be negative 1 over 3 plus x squared. 
and it's going to be equal to the derivative of this. This is the only guy that's going to be differentiated. So we're going to get just this, n equals 0 uh, to infinity. You're going to have minus 1 to the n. This n is going to come down, and it's going to multiply x to the n minus 1, and this is going to be divided by um, 3 to the n plus 1. Remember, you don't do anything to this because it's a constant. So that's what you get inside. But there's a minus sign here. We don't want this minus sign here. We want this. So we multiply both sides by negative 1 so that what you have is 1 over 3 plus x squared will now be equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, when you multiply this 2 by minus 1, you now have minus 1 raised to power n times minus 1. Well, that's going to be minus 1 raised to power n plus 1. So here we're going to have minus 1 raised to n plus 1. And you still have this n here that's not going anywhere. And then you still have x to the n minus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1. This is all we have. And we're done. Because all that's left, remember I told you that this was the original problem, and we're going to focus on this. We have generated this now. This g of x, which is x cubed, I, this was unnecessary actually, because I could have just left, left it as x cubed on the side. This x cubed is now going to come back here. So when you multiply this by x cubed, you'll be multiplying this also by x cubed, and you're going to get your answer. I think I can write the answer in the la bottom line here. Okay, let's try and squeeze it in here. So we have x cubed over 3 plus x squared will be equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, this doesn't change, minus 1, raised to n plus 1 times n times. Now, remember this x cubed is coming in to multiply x to the n minus 1. You can easily multiply polynomials. So that's what's happening. So we're multiplying x cubed by x to the n minus 1. That's going to be x to the n minus 1 plus 3. That's going to be n plus 2. x to the n plus 2 divided by, the denominator doesn't change, it's 3 to the n plus 1. And this is the power series representation for this function. Ah. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.